We're a country divided over what's happening a world away. The war in Israel is being treated in a way that we really haven't seen any harsh situation dealt with. Certainly, it's not being dealt with the way uh, things happened here after 9-11. We see an exponential rise in anti-Semitism, also Islamophobia, college campus protests, places of, you know, kind of mandated tolerance are showing on allowing such incredibly harsh actions and words directed primarily at Israelis, pulling down posters with faces of the hostages, violence, threats. I've never seen Jewish people as worried as they are about their safety in this country, as I'm seeing right now. And then you have another issue of this. A lot of the domestic protests that are an Arab, you do see a lot of black Americans. Uh, it's not a monolithic group. Everybody's got their own mind and their own feelings. But is there something here to understand? My next guest uh, has focused on this issue for a long time. Professor, YouTube host, big shot in the media, Mark Lamont Hill. It's good to see you, brother. Thanks for being here. Um, good to see first, you, my friend. I've never been let's more, talk about more dressed this. than you. I know. Well, you always look better than me. You're better looking. Um, <laughs> an affinity, uh, affinity argument. Explain it for us. Is there a group connection for black Americans with what they see in Palestine? Or am I getting it wrong? And if I'm getting it right, what is it about? I, I think there's an affinity for both Jewish brothers and sisters and for Palestinian people among the African-American community. And there always has been. Uh, I'm going to be real fast, but if you look at the, the 19th century, the 20th century, there were many Black organizations, many everyday Black people, and certainly Black leaders who identified with the Zionist movement. They were excited by the idea that an oppressed people, people who had been marginalized, subjected to pogroms, suggested to massacres, people who'd been smeared throughout history, could get their own nation state and be free. This was the idea that made people like W.E.B. Du Bois and Marcus Garvey excited about the formation of a Zionist state, of the Jewish state, what would ultimately become Israel. And throughout the 19th, the 20th century, we saw that happen. But as we move through the late 20th century, certainly after the 1950s and certainly after the 1967 war, Black people also began to say, hey, wait a minute, what's happening to the Palestinians to make this state form became different. So organizations like SNCC and the SCLC and the Black Panthers, and even Dr. King in his later days, were started to ask questions about what it meant for Israel to be formed at the expense of the freedom and determination and safety and dignity of, uh, of Palestinian people. And so for Black folk, you know, in general, it's not either or, it's we want Jewish safety, self-determination and freedom, but we understand that it can't come at the expense of Palestinians. And what we're seeing right now is one of those moments where an awful thing happens on October 7th, an awful thing, an indefensible, inexcusable thing happens on October 7th with Hamas attacking uh, innocent civilians. But the response is also unacceptable. And that's what we're talking about. Are you surprised that on college campuses, it's pretty much the first time that we've seen a terror organization given any kind of benefit of rationalization uh, in the form of Hamas. I've never seen it before. Well, I, I, think it's, I think it's a complicated question when we talk about Hamas. I don't see on college campuses, and I teach on one, you know, I have, I have a kid in college. You know, I, that's not what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing people say is Hamas is uh, responding to a set of conditions that have been longstanding. It's a powder keg. The powder keg is exploding, and we have to figure out how to not only fix the problem at the moment, but address the conditions that lead there, led us there. I don't see people marching for Hamas. I don't see people defending Hamas or giving Hamas the benefit of the doubt. I think what they're saying is that these Palestinian babies that are dying are worth something. They're worth just as much as everybody else's child, and we have to find a way to protect them and make them safe at the same time that we create a peaceful resolution to this latest iteration of a long-standing struggle. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.